Okay, welcome to part four of the 2.2, 2.3 sections. Um, covering a lot, there's a lot of parts just because we're combining these two sections together as one. So here we go. We've covered a lot of ground so far. Let's look at this. Uh, f of x is now defined as a piecewise function. Uh, if you guys remember these from pre-calc, uh, students typically tend to not be too fond of piecewise functions. But there's really not a whole lot going on uh, once you understand them. Uh, we hate things we don't understand, right? If we don't understand something, we tend to not like it. Uh, how is this defined? Okay, f of x has these two pieces. It looks like x plus 1 if the x values are less than 2. But then it turns into the square root of x minus 2 as soon as we reach 2 and then when we go on uh, from there. So, um, you know, so if we've got a value less than 2, we know to look here. A value greater than or equal to 2, we know to look to this. Okay. What does that have to do with limits? Well, let's take a look. Piecewise functions are a fantastic way to really dive into one-sided limits. And that's what we're going to do. So let's look at the limit of this function, this piecewise f of x, as x approaches 2. And you remember what that little negative sign means. It's from the left side only. We don't care about what's happening on the right side. Hmm, okay, so why is this uh, why does this lend itself to piecewise functions so well? The question becomes which piece matches with the left side of two? Is it the values less than two or greater than or equal to two? The left side of two. And you think, well, the left side of two would be numbers a little bit smaller than two. And so I'm going to look at x is less than 2, right? Smaller than 2. Let me write that out, what I just said. It, um, let me put it in words here. Use the piece of the left side of x equals 2. Okay, that's phrased kind of awkwardly now that I look at it again. But, okay, use the piece that matches with the left side <laughs> of 2. And so the left side of 2 would be the values a little bit smaller. And so that's x plus 1. So what we're going to do, we're going to say, okay, I'm really then just looking at the limit for x plus 1. So I'm going to replace the f of x with my x plus 1, the limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 2 from the left. And well, once we think of it that way, then we're just going to plug it on in, and we got our answer right there is 3. Hey, okay, well, that's not, maybe that's not that bad. Just identify which is, which matches the, the side we are that's in question. Hey, let's do the right side. The limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right. We look back up here. Hmm, okay, so on the right side, that means I'm a little bit bigger than 2. So that would be x is greater than 2, and it happens to be equal as well. So I'm going to take this part. Say, all right. The right side of x equals 2 is the square root x minus 2. So that's what I'm taking the limit of. And I'm just showing you all the rest of the steps here. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right of square root x minus 2. And I'll just go ahead and plug the 2 in. Hey, that's the square root of 0, which equals 0. Now, one other thing to notice is it did not matter that there was an or equals here. And there wasn't here. The approach is the same, right? So, I mean, if I was to go back, and just for the sake of argument, if I was to switch it and put the equal sign there, would that change either answer? Well, no, the, the answer here would still be 3, and this would still be 0. Because it doesn't matter what happens when I get to 2. It's only the approaching. So I can still plug in 
and I can still plug in in all the same way. And these answers three and zero would still be the same even if I switch. What if I go another step and I don't have an or equals to either one of them? What if they're both just this, less than, greater than? Does that change the answers? No, because it's all about approaching. And even though I plug the number in, that's, that's the answer to the limit. It doesn't matter what the function is doing at that moment. Actually, here, the way I've written it, um, at x equals 2, the function is undefined. But it would still be approaching these y values, even though it would never actually get there. It would still approach them. Okay, let me put the or equals back under that one, because that's how it was when we began. I got one last part to this. All right, these were the one-sided limits, right? Let's talk about a two-sided limit. I just bumped my table, I think. The limit of f of x simply as x approaches 2. So that's the two-sided limit. I'm kind of making a note here. So what's going on with the two-sided limit? So if Remember, a two-sided limit means the left and right sides must be equal. They have to approach the same thing from either direction. They have to match. Well, is that the case? And I guess another way to say it is the limit on the left has to equal the limit on the right. Does the limit as x approaches 2 from the left equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? If they're equal, then whatever they equal, that's the answer. But if they're not equal, then there's a problem. Hey, we did these already, though. The limit as we approach from the left, we got 3. And on the right, we got 0. Well, they're not equal. So what does that mean it does not exist. D N E. In this case, no. And so for a two sided limit, that's a does not exist. Okay. That is it for this example. In this video, we are on to. Um, uh, another topic. We're going to change things up a little bit in the next video. I will see you there.